Welcome everyone, in this video we'll implement the ball collision with the game boundaries. We'll start setting the game boundaries by creating the game width and game height variables so we know when programming the ball movement the dimensions of the screen. Then we will verify after each ball movement if the ball is colliding with the walls and if it is we will reverse the ball velocity so that the ball reverse its direction. So, in the previous video we start erasing the screen and moving the ball. As you can see Pong and you can see here. So the ball is moving, there is no trail behind but you can see that the ball goes past the screen. What we want now is begin to program the ball collision with the boundaries. So let's start. Let's begin by creating the screen dimension variables, window width, dw, window height, dw. Now let me search for the windows calculator. We know that the video mode width is 320, so we need to get this value in hexadecimal. 140. So 140H. And the height we know that is 200, so C, CH, C8 in hexadecimal. So in our program, use 0C8H. This is the width, the width of the window, 320 pixels, and this is the height of the window, so 200 pixels. Now that we have the dimensions or the boundaries of our screen, we can start checking for collisions. We go now to the move ball procedure. I see that um, I forgot the red command, so let's put here. So red, don't be like me. So we can comment this. I guess I were too lazy in the last video, so let's do now. Move the ball horizontally. Let's put this um, down here. It's the two, the two lines to move the ball horizontally. Let's copy this and let's paste it here. So move the ball vertically. Now, collisions. Let's start by writing some pseudo code. We first start checking for a collision on the left wall. So when ball x is less than zero, if it is, the ball is colliding with the left boundary. If the ball x is greater than window width, there is a collision with the right boundary. Now, if yes, it's col collided. So, we're checking this collision when we are moving the ball left or right. After moving left, we check if the ball passed left boundary. And when moving right, we check if we pass the right boundary. Now, when we're moving up or down, we check if we are colliding with the top or bottom boundaries. So if the ball Y is less than zero, it's a collision with the top boundary. And if the ball Y is greater than the window height, there's a collision with the bottom boundary. We can start now programming the code. First, we compare the ball x to 0, so CMP ball x to 0, h, can be just 0, I will go with the hexadecimal 1, so 0, 0, h, and if it's less, we jump with the GEL command, we jump to some label where we reverse the velocity in x. I call neg velocity x, you can call it everything you want. So 
If it's less, we jump to this label. Now, we compare the ball X with the width of the window. So, CMP, ball X, window, width. Remember that we can't do this with two variables, ball X and window width. So we need to move first to the to some register. I will use as always AX. We need to move to AX the window width first and then use this value. So we need to compare ball X with the AX register. If it's greater, you can see here AX. If it's greater, if ball X is greater than AX, we jump with a G G command to some label, the same, neg velocity in X. We can now create this label, so neg velocity X, and here is very simple, we use the neg command to negate the ball velocity in X. So, ball velocity in X will be equal to its inverse. And then we exit this procedure with the red command. Now, we do the same for the Y collisions, so we can copy we can copy this uh, code right here, where it will be an Y instead of an X, and we copy this and put it right here. Let's organize this um, this comments to be a bit more readable. Um, okay, so let's put this up here. Let's copy this too. So move. AX window height instead of width. Now we compare the ball Y to the window height, so AX, the AX register. We just need an L2 jump. If it's greater, we jump to this level, so neg velocity in Y. Let's put here a Y2. Let's make this prettier. Now let's create the, the other la label. So, neg velocity in Y, ball velocity in Y, Y and Y. It's all done now. Let's review this one more time. We're removing the ball in X, giving its velocity. We're checking if it's colliding with the left wall. If it is, we negate the velocity in X. If it's colliding with the right wall, we again negate the velocity in X. Then we're moving the ball in Y. We're comparing to see if it is colliding with the top wall. With the bottom wall, we negate the velocity in Y. To negate the velocities, we're simple inversing the ball velocity in X to be equal to its inverse. So, let's run again, let's see if this is working. Pong.asm link Pong Pong and here we go. You can see that uh, the ball is now reversing its direction when colliding with the walls. You can see too that the ball continues to go through the wall slightly before colliding. This is because we're not taking into account the ball size. In, so um, let's go again to the um, to the code to fix this. Um, here in this formula, we need to um, subtract to the window width the ball size. 
So here is the same thing. To the window white, we subtract all size. And to implement this in assembly, we just use the sub command. Sub AX ball size. Here is the same thing. So sub AX the ball size. And let's run this again. Let's see if it fixes our problem. Link Pong. Pong and OK, let's see. And it's still happening. So um, to fix this, we need to check the collisions early than we're doing so that the ball doesn't have the time to go through the wall. We could reduce the window width, I guess. Um, so we can go to the code and go here on this variable and try to reduce this value to a lower uh, value. But I guess it will be better if we create a variable to hold um, a value that then will subtract from the current collision boundaries. So I'll go with uh, window bounds dw6 and uh, this will be the variable used to check collisions early. So variable used to check collisions early we subtract again ax by this variable so sub ax window bounds we do the same right here and let's run again masm slash a bongdorasm Link pong, pong, and let's see, and this fixed, I guess. So, um, okay, so on the left wall is still happening. So, I guess we need to um, do the same. Instead of checking ball x against zero, we need to check with the window bound. So, we check, we're checking early. Here, the same. So, instead of zero, we put here window bounds. Uh, let's update the comments. So window bounds uh, will be zero plus windows bounds is the same, but is to be more. The comment will be more correct. So let's update some more comments. This is minus ball size minus windows bounds, and um, let's copy this and put right here. So let's um, run again. Masm slash a pong dot asm. And oops, okay. Um, I see that I did what I told you not to do. I used two variables to compare. So we need first to move to a register. I will use ax, the windows bounds, and then use this value. Um, we do the same down here, so let's move to AX the window bounds and put here the AX. Now we can compile it, do the linkage, run it and let's see if it's working. So awesome, um, it's working now. So in the next video, we'll um, restart the ball when the ball is colliding with the right or left boundaries. We will restart the ball to the center of the screen. I'll see you there.